Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. Much like I did over a year ago with Nakayama Miho no Tokimeki High School, I'm starting this Let's Play off with some interesting information on what it is that we're going to be looking at. This is my first Master System Let's Play. I'm actually playing a Sega Master System game for once, but... It's not really the Master System game you'd expect. What we're going to look at here is a Sega Master System port of a pirated clone of a Famicom game that first came out on the MSX. That game is called Superboy. And it was kind of, sort of, maybe developed in 1989 by this South Korean game development company known as Zemina. And it was originally on the MSX. The MSX was Microsoft's attempt to bring a single industry standard to the Japanese home computer market, which debuted in 1983, lasted until 1995, and was adopted by many Japanese companies who decided to make their own MSX consoles. Before MSX, there were several versions of Microsoft Basic, but none of them were compatible with one another. They were all different dialects of the same programming language, and MSX was Microsoft's attempt to fix that. And while it never became a worldwide success as they hoped due to the fact that Commodore and Atari led the market in the United States and the United Kingdom, MSX did do its job in Japan. It became popular there and also became popular in South Korea, the former Soviet Union, Argentina, Brazil, the Netherlands, Spain, parts of mainland Europe, and of course Japan. But where does Zemina figure in all of this? Well, until 1987, July 1987, South Korea did not have a copyright law for computer programs. And because of that, bootlegging was pretty much rampant. It was really easy to get away with. And many companies could sell pirate copies of foreign titles with their own copyright hacked in. Even after copyright law was made for computer programs, it was still very weak as the new law protected only the program code and not the intellectual property as a whole. Because of that, a lot of games were ports of famous Japanese games. And Superboy is no different. It's obviously a port of Super Mario Brothers and a rather questionably shoddy quality one at that. And while Zemina would make original games in their later years up until its closure in 1992, they would still sell multi-game cartridges with pirate copies of games. They would also make exclusive games for Sega Master System and the Famicom, but not all of them got released before the company went under. So what we're looking at is a really weird piece of history. Kind of. But I'd rather not take your time any longer. Let's go ahead and go to the gameplay footage, shall we? As you can see, it doesn't look like a Sega Master System game, or sound like one either. That's because he's using an older graphics mode that the Master System supports because of backwards compatibility with the SG-1000, Sega's previous console that was only available in Japan. The only game I can think of that uses that older graphics mode is F-16 Fighting Falcon, known outside of the United States as F-16 Fighter. As you can tell, the graphics are not that good. Also, there are a lot of problems with how the game mechanics work, 
jumps feel floaty. Enemies act kind of weird. Hitboxes are a bit wonky. And I'll explain everything as we go. I'm assuming you've all played Super Mario Bros. before, so I'll just mention the big differences. First off, power-ups. They seem kind of random. They may pop, not pop out of that box. You may not get the mushroom there. You may get in one of the other boxes. You may not even get it at all. It just feels really random. Also, if you die at any point, you go all the way back to the start. And if you lose all five of your lives, well, you go back all the way to the beginning of the game. There's no way to continue from where you left off. You can collect 100 coins to get an extra life, but good luck with that. Also, running is interesting, because instead of having to hold the button, you just have to tap 2 while you're moving. And as long as you're doing that, you'll be able to run faster. Now, if you turn around, you will lose your f speed, and you'll go back to regular walking speed, and you'll have to tap 2 again while moving in order to get to up to speed again. Also, I just managed to find it even harder to find a fire flower. The fireballs hit the ground and explode. They don't bounce off and keep going. Also, when I jump and hit bricks as Super Mario or Fire Mario, I can actually break the blocks, but as long as the brick fragments are still on screen, I can't jump until they disappear. Which is really dumb. I don't know what they were thinking with that. I also don't know what those things at the bottom are, but you can stand on them and you can't pass through them. This is the only time they appear and I never understood why. Also, those little platforms that go down when you put your weight on them, they don't go down right away. Not on all the way down. You have like a few seconds to react. And on the flag posts, the closer you are to the top, the more points you get on the way down. You'll keep getting points as long as you're on the sliding down the flagpole. Also, the coins act somewhat like s solid objects that only Mario can pass through. If you either throw a fireball at them, or if an enemy runs into them, the, either the, the fireball will explode, but the enemies will bounce off and just go in the other direction. Also, that Koopa just wigged out when he tried to go through the platform. He just started twisting left and right there, and you could tell the programming in this game is rather shoddy. Also, I'm going to have to show an all, a, the, what you really do in World 1 and 4, because as soon as I uh, get hit by this Potaboo here, and then wait here for some reason, I basically get the Potaboo locations all mixed up for some reason. I'm not sure if it's a glitch or just really shoddy programming, but it happened, and while some strategies such as running down those parts of the stage where I have to run downward to get hit, not to get hit by the Potabo, and then timing my movements here so that I move when the first one goes down and the second one is also going down and I have the timage up accordingly. It's made easier because again, I glitched out the Potabo locations. That Potabo isn't supposed to be near this bridge. As for Bowser, you have to jump over him. You'll have to hold your jump button so that you can jump as high as you can. As weird as the floating mechanics on the jump is. And then you'll have the hope to whatever date of your choice that you cleared Bowser. If you try to run under him, he'll trigger his hitbox. You'll basically hit it and you will die. You will lose a life. So now that that's taken care of. It's time to show what World 1-4 is really like, so let's get to that, shall we? At the beginning, you want to go slow until you reach the bottomless pit. From there, you can use the platform or you can make a long running jump. From here, just keep on running so that you can make it past these two potaboos. And then you get up here, you want to run while the first potaboo is going all the way down. If you keep your jump low enough, and you jump near the edge, you'll be able to get past the second one without it hitting you. From there, you can just easily jump over Bowser. Sorry, nothing. The game doesn't even tell you about a princess, which is kind of dumb. 
Also, I can't pause the game because if you press the pause button while playing this, the game wigs out and then you have to basically reset the game. You can't unpause it. The game is frozen. You basically have to power off and then power back on. It's You could tell that the programming, even on pausing, is really shoddy. And that'll wrap it up for World 1 of Superboy. Join me next time where I go through World 2, which is even harder than the first one. Until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!